at at 6.04 p.m. for the reappointment advisory committee. Today's date is September 25th. And uh, we'll start with the roll call. Ms. Cece? Here. Ms. Gibbs? Mr. Goodwin? Here. Ms. Proc? Here. Ms. Remsen? Here. Ms. Ben Williams? Here. And um, I think Ms. Palladino Christopher is virtual. Yes, I am present. And uh, I don't see Mr. Wells, but I would anticipate he will be joining us. Uh, the next uh, order of business is to accept our minutes from our previous meeting on the 19th. I'll make a motion, Ken. And I second it. All in favor? Aye. We have our meeting, uh, our minutes accepted. And at this point, what we will do is uh, have uh, ARC Bridge, uh, Prudy Behar will be um, presenting the uh, information. And after that time, we will have a public hearing discussion and uh, please limit your um, discussion to three minutes per person. Preeti? Yes. Yes, let me get started. Let me share my screen. Good evening, everyone. This is Preeti Mathur from Arc Bridge Consulting. And today I'm going to present to you uh, the plan that this uh, redistricting advisory committee has approved on the 19th of this month. Uh, just to give you an overview, the project requirements are to evaluate the common council district boundaries to ensure that they meet the requirements of law as stated in the city ordinance. And if necessary, based solely upon those requirements to assist the city in developing new district boundaries. And here below, you can see what the city ordinance says, that they, all districts should be substantially equal in population to the extent possible, consistent with the preceding established in compact and contiguous form following geographic divisions, considering communities of interest and historical boundary lines, and shall further use best efforts to include the boundary lines of the taxing districts as defined in the charter within a single council district where practicable. And see to the extent possible consistent with the preceding established in accordance with the requirements of uh, CGS 9-169F. So these are the requirements. So based on these requirements, we worked with the redistricting advisory committee or the reapportionment advisory committee to create the proposed plan. So on this slide, I'm just going to describe each individual element that we took into consideration. Population equality. So here, all districts will be drawn such that they are as equal in population as possible. The target population for each district is total population divided by the number of districts. A maximum deviation of under 10% between the most populated and the least populated district is an acceptable norm. The district should be compact and contiguous. Uh, census blocks are used to build district boundaries as they contain published census population counts and detailed demographic information. Fair representation of minorities. As per Voting Rights Act, 
minority vote will not be diluted. Minority populations will be fairly represented such that minorities will not be packed into a district or cracked into more than one district to dilute the minority voting power. Communities of interest. Communities of interest will be identified and all attempts will be made to keep them in one district as long as the population and other criteria are met. Attempts will be made to avoid splitting neighborhoods where possible without violating other requirements. Historical boundary lines, consider historical boundary lines, then taxing districts use best efforts to include the boundary lines of the taxing districts as defined in the charter within a single council district where practicable. CTVRA, which is the Connecticut Voting Rights Act, compliance with VRA, which is the federal, and the CTVRA requirements. So these are the reading redistricting requirements. And with that, now I want to show you the population as per Census 2020. So the Bureau of Census publishes this data source, which is called Public Law 94-171 data. And this is published every 10 years and it provides total population by race and ethnicity and voting age population. This data is developed primarily for redistricting. So looking at the chart here, you can see that we have uh, the Hispanic population showed in this. Then we have non-Hispanic white, non-Hispanic black, Asian, non-Hispanic Asian, other and non-Hispanic uh, population who said that there were two of two or more races. And here, the reason why non-Hispanic versions are used because we do not want to count people twice. So the population of the city of Norwalk is 91,184 when you look at total population and when you look at voting age population, it is 72,682. So now we look at the current districts with the 2020 census. And uh, here we are showing the pies in each district and you can see the various racial and ethnic categories. Now, the first thing that we did was we wanted to make sure and wanted to evaluate if the current districts, do they comply with the requirements that I showed you in the previous slide. So the first thing here, we looked at the difference in population in each district and the current maximum deviation is 18.86 and this needs to be under 10%. So the difference is coming that District A is the most populated district and District C is the least population, populated district. So this gives us the idea that we have to take areas from District A and add areas to District C. So in the map, we are showing the districts which have more than the target population in red or shades of red and in shades of green are these districts which have less population. So that was the first challenge that the current districts do not meet the maximum deviation requirement. The next challenge was where as you looked at these district boundaries, that they did not align with the census blocks. And we need to use that because that is the data that we need to use for redistricting. And this data, like I said before, is called the PL or the Public Law 
94-171 data. So the current district, so we started to look at the districts and we looked at the population in each district by the racial categories that I described before. So the districts are here. We have A, B, C, D, and E. And this is the population in each district. Here we have the total population and then our target population for each district is 18,237. So we realize that District A has approximately 2,000 people more than the target. B has 274 less. Then C has almost 1,500 less. D has a little bit more, and E has 525 less. So this here is uh, telling us that District A has more, District C has less. And then we looked at the racial and ethnic majority in each district. So you can see that districts A and B are minority majority districts. District B is a Hispanic majority district and districts C, D, and E are non-Hispanic white majority districts. So this is uh, looking at the total population. And then we looked at the voting age population as well. And we saw that these are the numbers for districts A and B, still uh, minority majority districts, and districts C, D, and E are non-Hispanic white majority districts. So having evaluated the current uh, districts and uh, finding out that they will not work, we worked with the reapportionment advisory committee and we came up with these proposed changes that I'm going to show you now. So with these changes, we have four changes that you can see here. And then on the later slides, we will also talk about other changes. They are due to when we align, we use census blocks and there are some changes. So the first change that we will talk about is from A, and this area is going to go to C. In change number two, it's going to go from A to E. In change number three, it's going to go from E to D. And in change number four, it's going to go from D to E. And other changes due to taxing districts, we will talk about them in more detail. So with these proposed changes, we were able to bring down the maximum deviation to 4.75%. So let's look at change number one. So this area that you're seeing, so on this slide, this black boundary, the black pick line, black and white, that is your current districts, current council districts. The red one that you see is your taxing district that you're seeing. So this area, which is currently in District A, we assigned it to District C. So how do we define this area? It starts from this Westport Avenue in the north and to East Avenue, East Avenue or State Highway 122. Three to Moody's Lane, and from here, following the river, and then this area that you're seeing highlighted is now being assigned to District C. This area has a total population of 1,682 and a voting age population of 1,393. And just to see the composition, the racial and ethnic composition of this area. 
62% of the total population in this area is non-Hispanic white. So the arrow is showing that it was currently in A and now being assigned to District C. Now looking at change number two, there is this, this area which is defined by Phillips Street to Glenwood Avenue. So Glenwood Avenue, Phillips Street, Glenwood Avenue. Uh, here we have Connecticut Avenue to Clinton Avenue. So this area is currently in District A. And as the arrow shows, it is now being assigned to District E. This area has a total population of 330 and a voting age population of 105. So 35% of the total population in this area is non-Hispanic white. Moving on to the third change. So this change here, so you can look at uh, Bonus Avenue in the north to Hunter's Lane. Then we have the Stepping Stone Road, Mayher Road, Eleanor Lane or Road. And then here we have these streets and this area has the Bonus Ridge Middle School which is used as a polling place by District D. So we assign this area to District D. This area has a total population of 351 and a voting age population of 293. 55% of the total population in this area is non-Hispanic white. Moving on to change number four. And this uh, is this part is currently a part of District D. And as you can see, the arrow is showing that it is now being assigned to E. And we have all the streets listed over here that border this area. And uh, this has a population, total population of 200 and 85, and a voting age population of 241. 79% of the total population in this area is non-Hispanic white. Now moving on to other changes, and these changes are due to current districts not aligning with census blocks. So when we use census blocks, then there are some changes. So here, these, we call them change number five and six, and the, the census blocks are here, and then there is like a little gap that is being shown. So this area between the taxing district and the current boundary and the proposed boundary is now going to be in District D. And uh, you can see the definition by the streets, which you can see on the map. And this area number six is also a similar situation as five, where there is this little uh, part of the block of these two blocks, which are now going to be a part of districts and uh, district D. So moving on to changes seven and eight, so once again, this is a whole block and uh, we chose to keep it in district, um, in district E primarily because the major part of this block is currently in district E. So that was the change that the committee agreed to. And then there is this block that you can see, which is shaded here. That is a whole block. So we could either keep it in District B or District E. The committee chose to put it in E primarily because that we would not have a small precinct that would have to be created. So these are the changes. And uh, then there is one more change here 
where there is this part of the block, these blocks are pretty big. And because most of the block is in District A, the, we chose to leave it in District A. So, and uh, we looked at the population and apparently this area is industrial. So these are the changes that we have recommended. And uh, I already told you that with these changes, we were able to bring the maximum deviation down from 18.86 to 4.75%. And here, you can see the uh, difference from the ideal population or the target. And the same thing, <clears throat> excuse me, in this proposed map, you can see how the deviation from the target has gone down. And because of this, we were able to achieve the 4.75% maximum deviation. And on this slide, we compare the numbers side by side. So you could see how the proportion of uh, uh, the racial and ethnic groups, how they would be affected. And you can see that we uh, the changes are small and A and B continue to be minority majority districts and C, D and E are majority non-Hispanic white districts. So this is by total population. And then on the next slide, you will see the same data by total voting age population. And that is the presentation. And these are the changes that we have that are being proposed and have been approved by the reapportionment re reapportionment advisory committee. Thank you, Preeti. And at this point, uh, we'd like to open up uh, public comments. Please keep them to uh, three minutes. And uh, first person is Elsa Obichowski. Thank you. My name is Elsa Peterson Obichowski, and I live at 41 East Avenue. Uh, which is in District A and will remain in District A according to what you are recommending tonight. Um, I, I want to acknowledge that you've all worked very hard. I know that uh, there are many, many uh, factors that you had to consider in deciding where to um, draw these new lines. Um, one thing that strikes me is I think it's really unfortunate that City Hall and the Norwalk Green are getting moved into District C. District A has traditionally been uh, known as Central Norwalk, and to me that is a community of interest. And I just wonder that if you allowed a deviation closer to 10% instead of going to the 4.75%, you might be able to avoid breaking up that uh, community of interest. Um, I think people, you know, members of the public are gonna be confused and annoyed no matter what. Some of that is unavoidable. Um, they have to go to a different polling place or within their polling place, they have to go to a different check-in table. Um, and, um, by you know making the first taxing district cross over out of district A um, is going to make it that much more confusing for some of those voters. Um, but I know you have thought about that and and you know you're doing what you can. Um, two questions. Have you determined how the city charter's wording will have to change where it specifies the boundaries of the taxing districts in relation to the common council districts? And then I wonder if uh, sometime this evening, if you could just remind us for the record of the process that's going to go forward for your recommendation to actually become enacted by the voters. Thank you. Is there someone else that would like to make a comment? If you're online and wish to address the, the committee, Please raise your hand electronically at this time. There are none. 
Great. At, um, at that point, um, I would like to have someone make a motion to adjourn. Motion made, Jamie. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everybody. Um, we appreciate your input and uh, have a good evening.